This is Audible. Burmese Days by George Orwell. Following George Orwell to Myanmar was not even on my bucket list, but here I am, sailing up the Irrawaddy River, the same river perhaps better known, thanks to Rudyard Kipling, as the road to Mandalay. But let me back up. Hello, book nerds! Welcome to another literary adventure! If you're new here, I'm Elizabeth from the blog A Suitcase Full of Books, and this week I'm in Myanmar. I've joined vloggers Kara and Nate, on a river cruise up the Irrawaddy from Bagan to Mandalay. Following in George Orwell's footsteps wasn't exactly on my bucket list, but when Kara and Nate decided to lead a group tour, I jumped at the opportunity. Not only would I be getting to learn from my favorite videographers, but I'd also be getting to see a part of the world that I wouldn't have otherwise done on my own. Kara and Nate are a couple from Tennessee that have been traveling the world for four years and YouTubing their adventures. We're Kara and Nate. We've been traveling full-time for the last four years, pursuing our goal of visiting 100 countries. We spent the last week in Myanmar, cruising up the Irrawaddy River with 36 of our newest friends. We're sailing on the Irrawaddy Explorer, and it just so happens that the suites on this boat are named for the most famous British colonial writers that wrote about their time spent in what was called Burma under British occupation. Welcome to my room. I'm staying in one of the Orwell suites. Let me give you a room tour. We have a nice big cabin, and then there's even a bathroom. Let me give you a little bathroom tour. Let's go to the writer's lounge. The other suites on the boat are named for Rudyard Kipling and Somerset Maugham. Kipling, Maugham, and Orwell all have their photos and some of their writings behind me here in the Writer's Lounge. The Writer's Lounge is also our main gathering space on the boat. There's also a bar and a lending library. And there's a gym. And a spa. And the back deck. The situation in Myanmar has changed quite a lot in a short amount of time. In the 1920s, Orwell was a military police in the country before returning home to England to write his book Burmese Days. By 2006, another author, Emma Larkin, published a book called Finding George Orwell in Burma. While she was following George Orwell's footsteps around Myanmar, there was a military dictatorship. Since then, things have changed a little bit. The country's opened up more to tourism. But many local Myanmar traditions have stayed the same along the Irrawaddy River. Before even arriving at our ship, Kara and Nate had planned a 40-kilometer bike ride from Bagan to Soleil, where we would board the ship before it started upriver towards Mandalay. Being able to bike through the countryside in small villages of Myanmar was a luxury Larkin wasn't able to experience during her visit. When she tried to rent a bike, it was refused. The proprietor of the guest house was lounging behind an empty desk in the entranceway, snuggled up in a shining green bomber jacket. I asked him if he knew where I might be able to rent a bicycle. He frowned at me silently, then picked up the telephone and called the police. I heard him ask a police officer if a foreigner was allowed to travel around Katha on a bike. There was a rapid burble of Burmese at the other end of the phone. Every few moments, the proprietor interjected a sharp, Hokla? Is that so? Then he put down the phone and frowned at me again. Why do you need to rent a bicycle? What's wrong with walking around town? He asked. I guessed that the answer had been no, and I asked him why foreigners were not allowed to rent bikes. He thought for a while, frowning all the time, and then said, it is because of safety. The roads are not so good in Katha, and nobody wants anything to happen to you. I looked at him dubiously, but he didn't continue. You can rent a trisha and driver, he suggested, trying to be helpful. Then the driver can look after you. I set off on foot. We've done about 18 kilometers so far. We're about halfway and we've stopped for a break and a drink. We're feeling pretty good. Uh, we're going at a pretty slow pace and it's dirt roads but it's flat. So it's a little bit bumpy but not so bad. And the sights are interesting and 
distracting us, so we're feeling pretty good. Oh, fine. Thankfully, the Myanmar government has now relaxed its bicycle policy for foreigners. After arriving at our ship, we had a quick lunch and turnaround because next we had a walking tour of Soleil, which is a small village where British colonial buildings can still be seen falling into disrepair. Despite the British attempt to westernize this nation, the Myanmar people of today still maintain a traditional way of life, and we were able to see and experience this throughout the week. Cut it into small size of the nut, and then a little, you sprinkle a little bit, and then another ingredient is lime. A white oh, yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. One tradition mentioned several times in both Orwell and Larkin's book is the chewing of then, the uh, betel nut. You can see the it's Myanmar's there, version of tobacco, like, uh, and those who were brave enough try to chew. Of the tobacco, so it's still tobacco. So how you do is, it's like you make a pack, and then you chew it. good but if you do it too much you will get your teeth red so and then later it turns into black so that's why you're not bleeding so don't worry about that it's just the the remain you know, of the video nut and then it's pretty addictive like smoking because of the tobacco in it so beetle chewing habit has been you know in Myanmar for a long time even in the king period they had their beetle nut uh, and beetle nut accessory you know, and then you 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 don't swallow it, okay? You you have to chew it out. <laughs> Let me say it one more time: you don't swallow it. Yeah, <laughs> you chew it a lot, and then you. What did you think? One more. It's good. Uh, I can see why people chew it. I'm pretty positive. What's it taste like? That's right, you'll know. It's very sweet. I see why they have the lime juice to kind of counteract the sweetness. It tastes tobacco. Tobacco strong. But he's like, he's like, he's right, tastes like a mushroom. After that, it was back to the boat to start our journey upriver. As we left, we were able to watch locals doing their laundry in the river. Our ship next docked in Bagan, where we had started with the bikes. We now had a couple of days in the city. The first day, Kara and Nate rented us all e-scooters to explore on our own. They told us to get lost among the pagodas. I recognized the small shrines that dotted the landscape from a passage in Orwell's novel and was excited to see them. According to Buddhist belief, those who have done evil in their lives will spend the next incarnation in the shape of a rat, a frog, or some other low animal. Upo Kayin was a good Buddhist and intended to provide against this danger. He would devote his closing years to good works, which would pile up enough merit to outweigh the rest of his life. Probably his good works would take the form of building pagodas. Four pagodas, five, six, seven. The priest would tell him how many. I wasn't so sure about our mode of transportation. I think this brings trust in Micah to a whole nother level because there are no seatbelts on this thing. Eventually, we found Kara and Nate and another member of our group, and we scootered with them until the sun set behind the pagodas. Oh no! Oh yeah! <laughs> Me! Oh. I love oh. hills. Oh jeez! Ah! 
Oh God. <laughs> Holy moly. These aren't made for opera. <laughs> We've been testing the limits though. <laughs> oh God, ow. Oh, sorry. That hurt, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Ever heard of the term drive it like it's a rental? I'm so glad Mike is driving. <laughs> The next morning, we had an excursion to Baggins Market. I couldn't help thinking of the scene in Burmese days where Orwell's main character takes the woman he hopes to marry to a local market and she turns up her nose. Let's go and poke around the stalls a bit, shall we? Flory said. Is it all right going in among the crowd? Everything's so horribly dirty. It's true, we saw flies covering the meat for sale, and we all turned up our noses until we were reminded that this is where our food was bought for the ship. Letting go of our Western ideals, we then reveled in the colors and handicrafts this culture had to offer. We stopped for tea at a little tea shop in the market. And we've also found the tea that George Orwell talks about in his first chapter, which is apparently awful. This tea looks absolutely beastly. It's quite green. You'd think they'd have the sense to put milk in it, wouldn't you? Ugh, it tastes exactly like Earth, she said, having tasted it. Is George Orwell right? Is it awful? Yes. How does the Brit feel about this? Thank you. It's like the it's like the third it's the third drag of the tea. It's actually, clearly that's what it is. Did you see how she was brewing tea? It was like the tea leaves on top, and then the water goes. She's it's like the tea. It's third drags. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not great. There you have it. Brit's opinion, Orwell was right. Dishwater. <laughs> Sailing in luxury compared to our surroundings left me feeling very much like the colonialist writers probably felt here in Myanmar, and much like Orwell, while enjoying the comforts, also felt slightly uncomfortable about it. Every time we get back on the boat, we get a nice cool hand towel, and they give us hand sanitizer. And then we get a drink. Cheers. And then we have to change shoes and we change into clean flip flops and leave our dirty ones and then they clean them for our next outing. I was on the search for a book with a less Western view of Myanmar, which I found in our ship's lending library. This book more closely aligned with what we would see the rest of the week, including the famous bridge pictured on the cover. But that is a story for next time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching!